The following is a special presentation of Henrico County Public Schools. Live game coverage of the Verina Blue Devils as they take on the Highland Spring Springers. Sold out, Glenn Rudisile Court, home of the 19 and 1 in defending state champion Verina Blue Devils as they host their arch rivals, the 12 and 5 Highland Spring Springers. I'm Will Catterley from HCPS TV, and joining me are three talented students from Verina's Center for Communications and Media Relations. We have Abigail Fisher. James, the Dr. James Love Jr., and Malachi Frederick. Guys, let's get right to it. Two teams that don't get along. One team defending state champ, only one loss, Abigail. Verina's winning streak goes so far, it goes into last season too, right? Right, they came back into the season with a 38-0 record. And the last time these two teams faced off, it was a very close game until the third quarter with a 59-49 win for the Blue Devils. And when you look at it, depth and balance inside and out. You try to play zone, they'll say, what, we got the three, you're gonna give me that? I'll take it. A lot of scores that can make this team work from Tyrese Jenkins to Jason Nelson. And I say inside and out. You saw the three ball. They also can finish at the rim. Check that out. So Verina looking very strong. Now on the other side, let's talk Highland Springs. Uh, James, Malachi, they played Verina very tough. What do they have to do to have a chance tonight? Well, Springers have to rebound the ball. Verina's a very good rebounding team. They crashed the board at will and they'll crash the offensive glass. The Springers had to control the defensive glass to win the game. I feel like Highland Springs, they need to you know, work on their defense and actually try to keep up with Verina from the last time. You know, slow them down a little bit. And obviously, if Jordan Crump and Damon Wirtz can get it going, they're the top two leading scorers for Highland Springs, that would work wonders. Well, we have someone courtside with us as well. Let's go down to our reporter who met with both head coaches pregame. Let's go down to Kenny Lawson. He's got more. Kenny. We'll get to Kenny later on in the program, uh, but let's talk more about this upcoming matchup as we get to seven minutes before tip-off. You play girls' hoops, so what do you feel like? What do you do to get ready in these last few minutes as you're dribbling around and getting loose, especially when it's your arch rival? I just, I lock out the whole world. Everything around me is not there. I just focus on the game and focus on how I'm going to play. Think about what I know about the other team and what I know about the last time we played them and go from there. There's nothing really you can do besides focus on your game and block out everything else that's around you. An interesting game in this one, guys, is the fact that they have a chance to win their final game as seniors at home. They've already held their senior night, so no pressure there. But these two teams, when they meet, it's like we're watching a football game, right? It gets physical. Yes, it does. Verona's physicality when it comes to the Springers is higher than any other team, even Henrico. So this game is going to be very physical, a lot of fouls. So you have to stay out of foul trouble to win this game as well. It's not just a physical mindset, you know? It, it's it's a mindset that they have. They want to win. They want to keep that title and they want to keep pushing to, you know, maintain that reputation of the best team in the county. A lot of people forget that these two teams met last year, not once, not twice, not three times, not four, but five, count them five times. Carina won all five, but they were all closely contested. And even in the ones that got away, they were awfully close, including the 69-61 finish in the state semifinals. Highland Springs made it as the eighth and last seed to get into the playoffs. Made it all the way to the state semifinals where they would eventually lose to now defending state champ Verina. So we are just moments away, a few minutes from the national anthem and a few minutes away from tip-off. Uh, we talk about scoring. We talk about Tyrese Jenkins. We talked about uh, the numbers and the depth that Verina has. Uh, from guards to forwards to centers. Highland Springs is more Damon Wirtz and Jordan Crump uh, oriented. Uh, who else needs to get involved? I think Zyever Wingfield needs to be a factor. 
Zaire definitely needs to be a factor. He's going to be a great factor on defense, but he needs to step up his offensive production to win this game. Well, guys, I think we've got stuff figured out down courtside. Is Kenny Lawson with us? He talked to both coaches beforehand. So let's hear what he got. From Thanks, guys. Both coaches are very confident in their team's outcome tonight. Verona sacked it to gain momentum early. Play a consistent 32 minutes. That's a full, full game. Play tough. Play consistent, and also they want to make effort plays. No lacking offense, no lacking defense. Make good shots. They want to make sure they also stay very, very competitive against Holland Springs. Holland Springs tactic is just as much as like as Verona's. They want to show up and play hard as well. They cover all aspects of the game, on and off the ball. They want to minimize their mistakes. No turnovers, no fouls. Last time they had a player fall out at the end of the game. They want to make sure they play for a whole game as well. Last time they stopped playing about three and a half quarters, as their coach, Mr. Tennisman, says. So, hopefully we're looking for a good game between the both of the teams. And back to you, Will. Appreciate that, uh, Kenny. And he brings up a good point, guys, in that the last matchup, you look at the stats, you look at the final score, it says 69-49. That's a 20-point win. That's a blowout, right? Wrong. Fourth quarter entered as a two-point game. It was anybody's game. It was a one-possession contest. Verina goes on an 18-0 run. End of story. But when you're a team like the Blue Devils and you've won a state championship, you kind of know how to finish, don't you? Yes, you do. You definitely know how to finish. You definitely know how to close out games. You get hot from the perimeter, you keep taking it. As the defense is giving you the inside, you go inside. They can't get too cocky, though. They have to... They still have to work, you know. Highland Springs, they're not a bad team. They just slow down a little bit. Verona has to keep up with that. Abigail, we've talked about the physicality of these two teams. Both teams can score the rock at a high level. Uh, Verona's got four players that average double figures of points. Highland Springs has a dynamic duo in both Wirtz and Jordan Crump. The question is, can they get any help from, say, maybe a Tremaine Talbert, say, ever Wingfield? Wingfield was at his best in the first matchup Highland Springs had with Henrico, and I think they're going to need the young guards' help to really be successful tonight. Yeah, I agree. I feel like the entire game just needs to be focused. Everybody's got to go together. They can't just stay on the two, like, stars. They have to go around. Everybody's got to do their job because – you can't just put everything on two people's shoulders and win basketball games. It's a whole team effort. That's why it's a team sport and not a two-person sport or a one-person sport. Defensively, I think the matchup's going to be very interesting. I think Highland Springs is going to want to muddy this game up a little bit, muck it up a little bit, uh, make it make it more physical because teams that have tried to play zone, as we saw earlier, the, the tape doesn't lie and the ball doesn't lie. As we saw earlier, you play zone, Verina shoots over you. You get up in their grill, and they drive right by it to the bucket, and they get an easy jam. So how important is it going to be for the Springers to mix it up defensively? Very important, because if you show one thing, like you said, they'll just do the other. So they just have to mix it up defensively. Don't get uh, – don't be simple with it. You know, try to confuse the offense. It's like, I feel like – Highland Springs, they can't, you know, come with the same plan every time, and vice versa. Verona, they have to, you know, switch it up. If if they keep making threes, you know, tighten up on the defense on the three-point line. If they keep making it in the paint, you know, close up on them. And once again, if you're just joining us, this game coverage is brought to you by the crew at the Center for Communications and Media Relations here at Verina, as both teams are pretty rowdy and ready to go and when i say they're brought to you by students from the center for communications and media relations what i mean is they are part of that center and they're not just here as talent up here like abigail and malachi and james but also kenny down there uh courtside as a reporter later we're going to get to davis daly he played in the jv game uh and our, our camera crew our replay statisticians everything uh, besides me and uh, a little bit of help from HCPS TV and setting this thing up, this is a student-run thing. You guys excited or pumped for this or what? Very excited. I can't wait to just talk about this game and watch these two teams compete. It's going to be a great game. So we are ready to get things underway as 
Verina once again at 19 and one takes on Highland Springs at 12 and five. Both these teams playoff bound and they're introducing the visiting Springers. We talked about Zyaver Winfield looking to be a factor. He gets the start tonight as does Christian Wilson, Damon Wirtz, Jordan Crump, and number 25, Malik Toll. Malik Toll is a load inside. He's very big, rebounding the basketball as well. Even though Highland Springs is gonna be a little bit undersized against this Blue Devil team. And now here's the lineup for your starting Verina Blue Devils and defending champs. Kennard Richardson. And Nelson as well. A six foot six inch senior power forward. Formerly from his Johnson's AP psychology class. Wearing number five, Tyrese Jenkins. And all three of them are captains as Jenkins is announced. Jordan Hernandez, I actually nicknamed him Dunky Hernandez early last year for very obvious reasons. And the dangerous Anthony Williams, otherwise known as A.J. Williams, to fill out the starting five. A.J. Williams dangerous because he can shoot the three ball like nobody's business from the corner, so watch out for that. Highland Springs is going to be forced tonight to defend the entire court. And guys, they're also going to have to take something away and I guess kind of pick their poison defensively. It'd be good if they got off to a good start for Highland Springs sake. So we're about to tip it away. Again, Verona coming in at 19 and one. Would be the number one seed going into regionals. Highland Springs at 12 and 5 overall. And Jordan Hernandez will line it up with Zyaver Wingfield for the tip. And the Blue Devils have it, and they'll go into offense right away. Jenkins to the corner. They spread it around so well, don't they? Nelson splashes it down, and Verina's on the board with a three. Jason Nelson can orchestrate as a guard. Verona can shoot inside and out. Here comes Highland Springs. The block down low, and then they call a loose ball foul, and it's going to go the other way as Verona will take over and get possession. Tyrese Jenkins will control in the corner and then inside. And up and under, scoop and score. Jordan Dunkey Hernandez for two. And Verina's off to the start. They won with a quick five zip tally. Highland Springs, not one to slow down. Verina is one to trap, though. And the Springers are on the move again. Pass back out in the corner to Jordan Crump. Too far. And the pressure for Verina early is winning out. And already Highland Springs and Coach Tennyson to say is uh, we're going to talk things over. Guys, uh, early going, just a 30-second timeout here, but your impression of uh, Verina's start and I guess Highland Springs not so hot start. Perfect. I think it's perfect. You perfect know, for Verina. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Five points in a row. Right now. This game often changes and goes on runs. We mentioned Abigail, the ending of their first matchup when Verina went and closed on an 18-0 run. So we're probably going to see some seesaw movement in this one. Yeah, a lot of movement. You're going to see a lot of shots taken from a lot of different players, especially AJ. He's very good from that back corner, like you said earlier. And you're just going to see a lot of movement and a lot of trapping because that's just what Verina does. But Highland Springs always finds a way to make it through and make this game very interesting. Both teams do. 
And they make it interesting there as they get their first two points of the game. Inside, it was Christian Wilson. Foul called, no, they'll say traveling. So Jason Nelson commits a turnover. And A.J. Williams did connect on that three to put himself in the scorebook. Verina already two for two from beyond the arc. That's worth watching. Springer's come back down. Verina playing a zone, looks like. Two, three. Forcing Highland Springs to shoot it and shoot they will. Nothing but nylon. Jordan Crump, who we talked about in the open, he needs to step up and have a big game. That's not a bad start, is it? Can't let him score. Gotta be somebody else. So Verina comes right back. Dipsy Doo, how are you fine? Thank you. Kennard Richardson. Springer's bringing it back up. The trap is gonna work though, and uh-oh, they got numbers! Oh, the pass was just too far, but they call a foul, and that'll be the first on Jordan Crump. And guys, last thing Highland Springs needs is for Crump to get in the foul trouble. He definitely can't get in the foul trouble. Yeah, being one of their star players, there's no way that they can keep up how they play. And just like their last game, he was very key to their game their entire the entire time. And losing him would not be, do well for them. He definitely was key to their success as Tyrese Jenkins missed the front end of two shots. Jenkins already with two of the ten Blue Devil points. Misses both. Trying to make a free throws. Island Springs dodges a bit of a bullet, and they're going to try to work the ball around with a little bit more pace. Stolen by Verina, though. Now we're heading the other way. Quick pass, and Verina gets it back. These two teams love to play quick. Expect to see it all night long. Highland Springs will settle it down. This inside and over the jumping Hernandez, it appears. Wilson connects, and he's got four of Highland Springs points. Right back, the long J, no. Rebound Highland Springs, and then he is fouled as I ever Wingfield. Gets a rebound and a fall on Verina. So Crump will bring it up for the Springers. Down 10-7 early on first quarter, five minutes to go. Back to more of a man-to-man -man defense. So you said it earlier, Malachi, about switching up defense. Verina does it there. Three balls off the mark. Blue Devils back in transition, and this is where they're good. Nelson to the corner. Williams got it. Hey, it's a dangerous man. He is deadly from the corner. Williams two for two from three. Springer's down six as we close under four and a half to go here in the first. Blue Devils are keeping their defense pretty tight. Crump, looking, finding, down low, that's blocked. Jenkins got his big old paw on it, now they're loose. Up and in for two. Kennard Richardson connects. Verina up eight. That ball is off the mark, here come the Blue Devils again. The extra pass, and into the land of the trees, Highland Springs is going to get the turnover. Kind of loose on the handle, guys, early. Verina comes back up, and then we're going the other way now. Jason Nelson blocked! Ho, 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 Damon works, and that works. Highland Springs has it now. It's like a ping pong match. Back and forth. For three, got it! Christian Wilson. And he has an early seven points. Guys, Christian Wilson's been a factor for Highland Springs on offense. He definitely has. The leading scorer out to this point. He's very good at pressuring the ball in defense, too. He just comes up to the ball, doesn't even think about it. Gets in that distance so that he makes the refs have to count, and he doesn't back off until he makes the other team make a move. 
Seems like both teams are pretty happy with this tempo getting up and down and not letting the other opposing team set up their defense. It's two more scored by Verano. Seventeen ten. That's going to be an offensive foul. They're saying that Jordan Hernandez was there first, and Verina gets Highland Springs to turn it over once again. Upset. Two thirty-nine to go in the opening quarter. Verina up seven. 19 and 1, looking for a 20 win regular season. Cheerleaders have had plenty to dance about this season and last. As a return to the Siegel Center would be just what Coach Lacey would love to see. Blue Devils, Poke and Prod get it into Jenkins, gets out of the double team, and that ball is blocked. Verina gets it back though, and no off the iron. And now the Spears head the other way, and they turn it back over. Dunkaroo, how are you? Tyrese Jenkins. Getting it back over and over again. That looks so good. It's just gonna be a back and forth game just like that the entire time. There's nothing that you're not gonna see in this game. Just constant back and forth. A lot of aggressiveness, a lot of contact is going to be a good one. One thing to keep in mind, there's a decent amount of players from this Highland Springs team that are from their football team. We know how good Highland Springs football has been over the last four years. So if you're seeing a lot of players on the floor, as you see Tyrese Jenkins throw it down, that was a soft dunk, wasn't it? It was yeah. like he was being nice to the rim. <laughs> I bet you he's, he's more authoritative later on, and he's going to have more opportunities, isn't he, at the rim? That was a one-way jam. <laughs> Back inside, fade away. High off the glass. No, there's Jenkins. Got it. Gotta keep locked off the glass. Tyrese definitely heating up, Mr. Love. 21-10. It's a football score. As we wind down with a minute 25 to go in the first. Springers need a good possession right here. That Almost worked, but the defense says no. It's another block, and Verina again heading the other way. The step up, Jay, is no good. Highland Springs, they got to keep their handle on the rock right now. I had a lot of turnovers in the fourth quarter. Open three, he's got to hit it. Ver I was going to say, Verina needs it. Highland Springs needs it. Verina, man, are they quick. Can't finish the bunny. Now the Springer's going for the easy two. Jordan Crump does not finish. Look at this! Where's the D? Oh. Man, we're trying to have a dunk contest. You gotta throw it down. You gotta finish. They're gonna call a late whistle and a foul. I don't know. I don't think the officials even know what to do at this point. 35 seconds ago, 21-12. Blue Devils had. Uh, an amazing opportunity for an NBA Jam type of play. And he just missed the dunk. Ball stays with Island Springs. 32 seconds to go as Crump will work it. Crump, double. Extra pass, well done. Seemed like Highland Springs were prepared for that one. And the size of Verina is giving him trouble too. Not just the double teams, but you saw right there Tyrese Jenkins with the block. Uh, he's got several inches over the driving guard there for Highland Springs. Great entry pass though. They find Crump, and he finds the scores table again. Now they're going to let A.J. Williams take it off for the final shot. Four seconds, three seconds. He's got to get it off too. He started fast, Verina started fast, and they closed the same way they got this quarter going. 24-14, Blue Devils with a 10-point lead after the first quarter. Abigail playing in a game that is this crazy, topsy-turvy back and forth. If uh, you're Highland Springs, what do you do to combat the trap and 
the difference in size because Ryan has got an advantage here. Well, to get through the difference in size, you just have to think about it a little more. You have to look at your men. You have to fake, pump fake if you have to, drive to the basket. You can't just do everything obvious. You have to be discreet. You have to try to hide what you're doing because if you don't, you're d you can't do anything. You're stuck. And that's something that Holland Springs seems to be struggling with at the moment. Patience is a virtue. And James, Coach Lacey right now, what do you think he's saying to his troops in his sixth year as head coach? Let's keep up the tempo. Uh, use their size, their advantage, and keep on doing what they're doing. They played very well first quarter. Coach Tennyson gets a lot out of his Highland Springs Springers. Last year, that team at Highland Springs weren't even over 500. Somehow got in as that eight seed, made it all the way to the state semifinals. Can't say enough about what he did with this group last season. And a lot of players returned from that talented team. So the Springers are stalled off, start off with the ball here in the second down nine. Driving to the hoop, up and no! Blocked again. And I believe that's the fourth block for the team for Verina as Jordan Hernandez got his hand up. And Start, the, it's starting to look like a volleyball game out here. Back and forth constantly. Back, that's volleyball for you. Feels that way, especially with the blocks, right? Right. So here's Jason Nelson as he quickly gets rid of it. We go high, low. No, but a foul. Nice looking drawn up play. Abigail, that looks like a play that's drawn up by the coach during the timeout because the passing was very uh, determined on that one. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you'll see Verena do. They'll go to the bench and Lacey will go and he'll put a new play in and all of a sudden you'll see something that you've never seen before and they just pass the ball and get it around very well and everything that he tells them to do, they go through with it. About the only thing not going Verena's way right now as Hernandez misses is at the free throw line. They haven't connected on their free throws yet so far this evening. Hernandez will have another. That is no good and Highland Springs in desperate need of a bucket. That is a foul and no that block does not count but it looked cool. It'll be on the floor and it'll be Verina's third team foul. Highland Springs right now has five. That's something I feel like we're going to see a lot is a lot of fouls through this game. Like, there's no way that these two teams, being who they are, are going to not foul a lot. And that's just something you're going to see and something you're going to get used to is a physical game with a lot of fouls being called because it's just how these two teams play and it always makes the game really good. Highland Springs, again, struggling with that zone and that length, looking for something of an opening. Driving to the lane, ingenuity, well done as Tremaine Talbert connects for two. One of the football stars I mentioned earlier. Ball's all over the court again. Step back three, no, but the offensive rebound and he misses the easy layup. Damon Wirtz was there, but couldn't convert. So Verina with a chance to make it nine or 10. Springers get it back, three on two. All the way to the rack, and he is fouled. So Highland Springs' answer is to get the turnover themselves. Don't let Verina even set up defensively, and David Wirtz is going to go to the free throw line. Fourth team foul on Verina. Holland Springs just seems to be going for a lot of fast breaks because that's what's going to break this Verina defense is you come through, you, ru you run, you get down the court as fast as you can, and that's the only way to break through. And let once Verona gets on top of that, they're going to have to find something else. But right now, that's what's working, and that's what's getting them fouls and getting them on the free throw line. And that's something they seem to have done well with right now. Charles Tart checks out. Anthony Williams back in. Here's a look back at that foul, and Kind of a cool angle at the uh, block that didn't really count. Five point lead for Verina. And the double team, they're going to call a jump ball. Guys, where's the possession arrow point? They didn't let him get in the rhythm. It's a lot of contact on one person, a little switch up on the defense. The ref called a jump ball, and Ty you saw Tyrese looking for a for a foul or some kind of holding or something because it 
that's what it looked like from here, but the ref caught a jump ball and the players didn't seem very happy about it. They got a good high low going on and he is just grabbed. And oh my! I don't know, I wouldn't want to see this again, guys, because it really looked like there was a foul. It looked like he was grabbing his back. Instead, they called a jump ball. You can tell the crowd didn't like it. Alex Springs gets the ball back just down by a five. Springer's having trouble getting out of the front court. They finally do. And driving, slicing, dicing. That's a little hard off the glass. Look how quick. Uh-oh. Ooh. And the foul. Bernard Richards flexes and says he's been eating his Wheaties as he puts that one in and he can convert the old fashioned three point play. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping for a dunk there. I thought we were gonna get some showtime. I thought we were gonna get some showtime. James Love, the doctor, you would have thrown that down. <laughs> so, James, tell me, is this true? Your middle name is Truth. Yes, true you are, love. You are James Truth. Yeah. True love. Oh, God. True love. Yeah. And that was a truly sensational block. Yes, it was. By Dunky Hernandez, and then a foul on the other side, and they hug and make up, but wow, what a talk, what a block. You could tell the crowd was looking for a foul on that block. I, everybody jumped up and was screaming that that was a foul over there, and they didn't get it, but. It worked out in Brian's favor in the end because they're on the free throw line again. Well, the Blue Devils are jumping out of the building right now. That's five, six blocks, and we're just in the second quarter. First free throw is up and good. And it's getting a lot more aggressive than I anticipated. The reason why Brian is at the free throw line is because that's a 17 foul for Highland Springs. Bernard Richardson hit the front end of the one and one. Here's a second. Got it to go. Island Springs down nine. All the way to the rim, and you could argue there was contact there. No call. Verona gets it back, and they're not stopping. Inside. There's another foul. And let's take a look at that block one more time, guys. Here comes Highland Springs. First of all, look, they've got the advantage. Three on two right up, going up. Get out of my house. Jordan Hernandez goes back to the line after that amazing block. And a great job there in replay from the Center for Communications and Media Relations here at Verona. Again, the game's being brought to you by the Verona Center for Communications and Media Relations. We've got the, all those cool replays you're seeing. That, that is from a Verona High School student. No, no joke. And all the talent up here with me, that makes me look bad. They're also okay, Verona students. So Highland Springs down 10, guys. Uh, not out of the woods yet, though, as Verona. The Springers try to get back into it here. And it looks like Verena's going back to that 2-3 zone that's worked so well. For three, Crump. No, too hard. Rebound, and I think they're going to call over the back they do. That's a foul on Damon Wirtz. Back and to the line they go. Absolutely. Verena will get the one and one. Foul on Alex Burns, number four. Wirtz, that's his seventh team stop. That's nine team fouls now on Highland Springs. One more and they're in the double bonus, which means they'll get two free throws the rest of the way with just under five minutes to go here in the opening half. Knocks the first one down. I'll tell you what, these are two proud high schools, Rhina and Highland Springs. They pack the house for football and they do the same in basketball. This is a big time crowd. This is a sold out arena tonight at Glenn Rudisaw Court as he makes a pair. And it's 30 to 18, Verina. Timeout on the court. So James Love, we've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen some threes. We've seen some blocks. We've seen some dunks. At the end of the day, so far, we've seen Verona versus Highland Spring. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
You know, one of the things about Verona versus Highland Springs is it's not just a battle between the basketball teams. These cheerleaders bring it on as well. I'm yeah. serious. Look, I mean, they will battle against each other during every break and every timeout. And at some point, you'll have one or two that flip at least halfway down the court. Definitely brings some energy, though, right? Yes, they do. It's a lot of animosity between the cheerleaders and the players. It's like it's it's like a nonverbal form of communication. Like we're better than you, going back and forth yep. throughout the of, entire night. A lot of pride. For three, Crump corner, no. And look who it is, Tyrese Jenkins with the rebound. He quickly finds Nelson back top of the key. AJ's got it, no. Too hard, but the offensive rebound is there. Ron has been killing Holland Springs in the glass. Jordan Hernandez has done it on both sides of the court, hasn't he? Yes, he has. 32-18, Blue Devils. Highland Springs with 4.06 to go, tries another triple, and if they're going to come back and win, they're going to need to hit some threes. Verina's last loss was Elsie Bird. Elsie Bird hit 12 threes in the first half. Highland Springs gone a little bit cold. And Verona is getting to the free throw line when it matters. I mean, that is blistering hot. I've been watching Verona play all year. Here's that rebound again. We were talking about offensive glass, right? And when you get a second chance, you give a defending state champion a second chance on that rebound we just saw, put back, and easy to. That's demoralizing to you. Yes, you're going to have to pay for allowing somebody to get the offensive of glass, especially the Finnish state champions, like you said. I said that uh, when I was talking to my television, watching my alma mater Oklahoma Sooners play and give up rebound after rebound late in the second half against Iowa State the other night. But I digress. <laughs> Another free throw upcoming. A.J. Williams, good on that one. So Abigail, uh, being a player yourself, you've been on both sides of the equation. You've been a team up 33-18. You've also been the team down 33-18. What do you do if you're the team that is down? Uh, obviously, you want something positive to happen before the end of this half. You pressure the ball. All you can do is get on the ball, try not to foul, do your best. You can't throw up shots that you know aren't going to work. If you throw up random threes and you just wing it, you're not going to make anything. You have to think everything through you have to pressure the ball get on top of it don't let them make it down the court make them make the turnovers you don't make the turnovers there you go and right now it has been Highland Springs making the turnovers and it's been a big difference in the game so far is a J Williams gonna split the defense extra pass how about one more Jenkins thought about it now that's ball movement that is Bob Miller right there. Hernandez. Great finish. Guess who? Hernandez. Hernandez is killing it on the glass tonight. Like dude, He just can't be stopped. He gets in there and he's going to make it. I think he's missed, what, one shot? That was almost really unbelievable work by Charles Tart, but he got a little bit too tricky with yeah. the uh, handles on that yeah, one. A little bit too saucy. A little bit too much sauce on that. The three, no. Highland Springs cold from beyond the arc, and Verina is taking advantage to the rack. No, which way are they going to go? I think they call an offensive foul. Highland Springs defense was there, and the Springers will take over. With 2.50 to go. Here it is, the ball movement. We talk about it, and then just going to the lane and knowing that you have the speed to get past that extra defender, well done. Yeah, their height is doing them wonders tonight. All the the difference in the height between Holland Springs and Verona, it's just a big thing. And the height just is killing the Springs with how short they are compared to Verona. And they're not even small guys. They're big guys. And they just can't make it through how big Verona gets. Well, somebody's got to get hot shooting. But I, I think your, your earlier point was a good one, which is if your offense is having trouble, you got to get it going with your defense. And that'll start things. Also, great inbounds play there. Springers connect for two down low. That helps. 
So Jason Nelson brings it up, up 15. 2.20 to go and count. Nelson. Top of the key, Jenkins. Williams going to fire it up. No. Big rebound, Highland Springs. Let's see if they can beat the defense here. They do, but they lost something. And a jump ball. Things get a little clustered when Highland Springs get that ball. It's almost like they went too fast. Yes, they do. You can't, you can't outrun the ball. If you outrun the ball, you're gonna mess yourself up every time. Even if you're ahead, the worst thing you can do is try to run faster than the ball is going. Highland Springs with the turnover. Almost turned it right back. Ooh, nice footwork to keep it from being it over and back. And inside they find Mr. Crump. And Jordan Crump is keeping Highland Springs at least somewhat in this. Down 13. Nelson, nice dish. Looking for the dime. He's got yes. it. Dime. That was a great find to the corner. The senior, Charles Tart, gets into the books with a three. Nelson does so much as a point guard. He can shoot, he can distribute as we saw right there. And he's not afraid to take a foul either. He can give up and sacrifice the body and get that offensive foul as well. Sees the court so, so well. Look at that, wide open Jenkins. Only a sophomore too. That's right, he was a freshman last year. Offensive rebounds again and it's Jordan Hernandez again. Hernandez in double figures here in the first. Stolen by Jenkins. Here comes Verina. Ooh. Very gonna see. possession. Who's that out on? That's a good question. Uh, I think the refs are going to get together. Let's take a look at this three from earlier. We're talking about Nelson and his handles. Look, it's almost a no-look pass, but it's definitely a dart. And right into the shooter's motion. Can't do it any better in split splash. AJ loves making those shots. Sure does, and it's easier for a shooter when you get it right in stride, like that. Except that's got nothing but air behind it, and here comes AJ. Verina doubling up, Highland Springs 42-22. And they're gonna get a line. Last year, Coach Lacey said after they won the state championship, which is the first one in Verina Blue Devil history, he said, I thought we were a year away because he had so many players that weren't seniors. That's only good news for Verina in 2019 because they all come back and they get a year older. That experience helps them this year too. That our championship experience will be better than some of these other teams in the playoffs. AJ will line up for his second and knock it down. So 44, 22, 18.2 to go, and this might be the last possession of the first half. Crump looking. Got to get something inside, but they're going to have to settle for a long jump shot here in a second. Here's a pass to the corner. And they're not even going to get a shot off. Wow. Verina's defense confusing Highland Springs. And they are defending state champs, and they are playing like a state champion. We have Davis Daly with us down courtside with Coach Andrew Lacey. Uh, Davis, what's going on with Verina and the success they had so far in the first half against their arch rival? As me, Malachi, James, and Abigail wait. Coach is getting settled down. And uh, we've got Davis Daly in just a few minutes, guys. So just before we toss down to him, what a half for Verina. Amazing half. They finished the game, finished the half with a 22-point lead. Playing great defense, great execution of offense. And you talked about the defense. You can't t talk about the defense without talking about Jordan Hernandez and what he's done. 
with the dunk, the dunking. We'll go down to Davis now, who's got head coach Lacey. Andrew Lacey, go ahead. Hey coach, with a 22 point lead going into the half, what is your game plan like moving forward in this game? Um, we're gonna come back out and we're gonna make sure that we look at the game like it's zero to zero and we wanna stay disciplined. We really wanna play really, really good defense, take care of the basketball and then try to get some guys healthy going into next week. Good luck, Coach. Tell you what, we'll be back for the third quarter in just a few minutes here at Verona. The following is a special presentation of Henrico County Public Schools. Live game coverage of the Verina Blue Devils and the Highland Springs Springers. Coach Andrew Lacey and the Verina Blue Devils looking like defending champs tonight on their final home game of the regular season. As guys, they lead Highland Springs 44-22, Malachi, James, Abigail. Guys, you look at what happened in that first half. We talked about Jordan Hernandez. He has 10 points. You look at Kennard Robertson. He's got 24. He had 20 in the second quarter alone. And for Highland Springs, the only guy that they've been able to get going so far is Jordan Crump with nine. So what is it that Verina has done that has limited Highland Springs because 22 points is not what they're used to scoring in a first half of play. It's been a block party. Jordan Hernandez is blocking every shot that comes his way. They just got to get around the lane, work through the chest of him, and they might have a chance. You just have to be efficient. Besides the blocks, it's a lot of Verona crashing the boards and a lot of Verona doing really good with just getting the ball around, a lot of ball movement. They're not just going to one person the entire time. Everybody's getting their hand on the ball. They're all crashing the board. They're getting fouled. It's They're forcing fouls to be made, and then they're starting to get back on their – they're getting back on their game, and they're making their free throws now. And that's just something you can't let Verona do is – Get to them, get into the boards and make their free throws. I see a lot of communication going on on the on the court. There's a lot of hand movement, a lot of directing from the from the captains, uh, Tyrese Jenkins, Jay Nelson. He's really, really communicating with this team, and that might be the best thing that they can do for themselves. And when they're moving the ball, Verina offensively, the way they are through Nelson, uh, they're very hard to beat. I mean, you saw the spacing that Verina was able to create in the first half. For Highland Springs, I feel like in the second half, it would behoove them to try to get to the free throw line. To Verina's credit, they've def defended really well without fouling. So, what Highland Springs has to do is get it inside and hope that he can draw some contact, at least to get stops on the clock, which is their best friend if they can come back. Yeah. Right now, it's their enemy. Well, it is getting really physical. It has been physical, it will stay physical. These two teams uh, always go after each other. And even though it's a 22 point game at the half, we've seen runs before. So we're only about a minute and change away from the start here in the third quarter at 44-22. Verina with the lead. And they really have done it all. I said Kennard Robinson with 24 points and with Jordan Hernandez with 10. And Nelson almost has double digit assists. They've shot the ball very well, while Highland Springs beyond the arc has been pretty cool. Let's see what changes, if any, the Springers make to their lineup. Again, Jordan Crump leads all scores for Highland Springs with nine. Christian Wilson's been a nice surprise for them. He has seven. Other than that, it's been Jackson with two. Tremaine Talbert has four. And it's been all about Hernandez and Richardson. 
Burgers need to get some ball movement, get everybody involved, get into the paint, work the corners. Need to start off the second half with a run. The biggest thing Hounds Rings can do this half is pass the ball and get in, get into the paint, not back out and stand out there in the three, three point line because obviously it hasn't been connecting very well for them. And the smartest thing for them to do is just good passes, smart shots, not just throw anything up. Well, we'll see how that transpires. Well, they threw that up and it didn't work. Much to what you just said, Abigail. And now Verona takes advantage. Nice left shot. Serrano and Jason Nelson number four. And yeah, that was a nice little wrinkle, wasn't it? I mean, if you got a chance to get a turnover and you can trap somebody, do it. It's uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. Verona traps themselves. They're very good at getting out of them. They practice against it so much, but you don't have much of a say when you're down 22. You want to change the momentum. Yeah, but they're picking on the smaller guy on the court. Well, Nelson will bring it back up. Highland Springs playing tight man to man here to start the third. Yeah, the zone wasn't really working in the first half. So they're trying to push things up. I'm not going to say do work man to man. Caused the turnover right there. We've seen that high low kind of pick or screen play a couple of times. The pass is just a little bit off. So Verina has a turnover and Highland Springs trying to get hot. That's the guy to do it is Crump, but he went too far on the three and they're going to call it Verina basketball. No ball movement on that possession. Just got the shot. Shot it. Wasn't very efficient. So Nelson will take his time. And he can afford to do it. They got all the time in the world. The best thing they can do is run the clock out. They can't spend time doing crazy things. They have to play smart basketball. Tyrese Jenkins scores two. You know, it's really dangerous when you're courtside because this can happen. Look out! <laughs> right in your living room. And oh, it's just see the look on the on that girl's face. Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> That's the uh, oh no look. <laughs> I've been there. I've been hit in the face so many times, and it's actually made me smarter. <laughs> She's okay, so. Good. It's a tough job. Boy, good ball movement there for Highland Springs. It and was. they don't even get rewarded for it. That was the best that they've moved the ball all game. 46-24, Verona back in transition. Nelson, floater, got it. Tara dropped a great field shot in the paint. Nelson in transition again, uh-oh. Nice. That's something else Verona does very well is they pass the ball down the court. They don't just pass it close together. They can throw that ball down the court. It didn't connect in the first half, but it seems to be connecting now. You can't let them be that open, can you? I mean, like, you got to get back. Jason Nelson with the block. If you leave Verona open, you're Ooh. just in a lot of trouble there. Well, and this speaks to the opening of our show and, and just how deep and talented Verina is. They can beat you with height and size. They can beat you with, with skill and finesse. And one, guy, one or two guys can be off and they can still be just fine because other players will pick up the slack as Richardson gets another two. Richardson has been absolutely in fuego as we see the floater here. Nelson showing off his skill set. He went off for over 20 points against Henrico about one week ago as Highland Springs finally connects for a bucket. He had three point shot, it's 52-27. We've got some really good replays so far tonight from the Verina Center for Communications and Media Relations guys. And that's, they are covering the game with cameras. They are the talent. They're making me sound better, and that's hard to do. We're out here. <laughs> we're having fun. Verina, uh-oh, showtime. He got hit in the face. They called nothing. Somebody next to me says, blow the whistle. Yeah. Turn over, Verina. 
one job I would not want would be to be the referee. Well, you guys do a lot at the Center for Communications and Media Relations. Tell me a little bit about what you guys do. Uh, some, some things that we do, we really um, we operate on cameras. We do media relations type things. We, but we don't only go on the camera. We make newspapers, type. We, uh, we have a very hard English curriculum to look forward to. And um, yeah, we like to. I don't know how to explain it. It's so much I can't even get my words out. You also got uh, a show that you guys produce called Take 15. We have Take 15, and we have our morning announcements. Our Take 15 is run by our upperclassmen, and then our morning announcements is run by our sophomores, and sometimes our juniors are in there a lot. It's just something that gets us on camera and gets us used to this kind of stuff that we're doing here. By the way, that, that's another point. As, oh, a stop and pop, and no, Highland Springs gets it. You just made a great point. If you're enjoying this program, these guys sitting next to me are only going to get better. The people on the floor and the people running replay are only getting better because they're only sophomores. Whoa. I'm not just talking about the players on the court. I'm talking about the people right next to me. Two guys are only going to get better as sophomores in high school. I wish I had this opportunity when I was a sophomore in high school. I might actually be all right. Oh, man. What's that, block number seven for the night? Highland Springs gets their hands on it, but Verina's defense has not let up at all here in the third. Yeah, that time it was the senior Charles Tart getting his hands on it. Let's take a look at that block again. Here it is. It's a little celebration by Tyrese Jenkins. Woo! He got his arm up there, and Charles Tart. You know, he's not the main star for Verina, but he brings a lot of meaningful minutes, this Tart. Yeah, Charles Hart gets out there and he plays his best the entire time he's on the court and he never lets up. That's something that the entire Verina team is, even if you don't start, you get out there and you give it all you got. And that's the same thing for Holland Springs. They get out there and they give what they have until they can't give it anymore. Last year, as Crump gets the layup and the foul, go to the line for the three-point play, I remember it was uh, Simon Pinchbeck who would start for the Blue Devils. And Hernandez would come off the bench. And he had to accept that role and really embrace it. Uh, and that's a tough thing for college kids to do, let alone high school. Um, but he embraced it. And without him, I don't, uh, you know, they needed everybody to win the state title last year. So without him embracing that role, they don't win it. I really firmly believe that. Bryna with the rebound, chance to increase their lead. And that was pretty. Tyrese Jenkins. Make a little finish. Very finesse move on the basket. Tyrese Jenkins scored a thousand points for his college, high school career. Earlier this year, very same game, head coach Andrew Lacey picks up picks up his 100th win. I guess the two must have like gone out to dinner together afterwards and celebrated together because those are big milestones. That's it. Steal. Highland Springs getting in on the block party. A lot of contact and no foul. Good enough. Well, they call it that time. And Kennard Richardson will go to the free throw line, looking to get close to 30 for the evening. To go off what you said earlier about um, Coach Lacey and his 100th win and Tyrese and his 1,000 points, I know that as a team, they all came together and got a bit giant poster for Coach Lacey and all signed it for his 100th win. They knew it was coming. They could all feel it. You know, they were all looking forward to it. And I know Tyrese got a jersey and um, a ball with his with 100 points on it. And it's just something that they could feel coming. And they knew that if they played their best, that's what they get. And that's something they do. They anticipate their wins. And they know that they are Verina. They are Verina basketball. And they can show it off. And we did... Uh, live game last week a couple of games with herm tv they did a tremendous job as well cesaria jones a member of the hermitage lady panthers scored a thousand points it was, it was a different story she's basically the scoring for hermitage they don't have anyone else so if you're a player at verina and you score a thousand points you've really earned it because a lot of players can score like that guy right there jordan hernandez yeah, getting to 1,000 points out of Rhino is something very big. Everybody is a big part of the team. Everybody scores, not one single person 
in a season won't score. You have everybody who pitches in and helps to win games. It's not just one person. My goodness, it's showtime. Great, Nero steps. Black body continues. Yeah, the foul is on the body, though. So the block won't count. Once again, game coverage brought to you by not just HCPS TV, but by the Center for Communication and Media Relations here at Verina High School. All the camera shots you're seeing, the replays, the play-by-play, -play, except for yours truly, by Verina students. Here's a look back at the layup in between two, gets it to go. Ref tries to get in the way. Hernandez. And Hernandez adds to his night, and Coach Tennyson says he's seen enough. Time out on the floor, 65 to 29. Guys, I gotta ask you, because you guys have seen Verina almost oh, night in and night out. But uh, how much did that loss to Elsie Bird that ended the opportunity for Verina to have a perfect regular season. How much do you think that impacts them moving forward? Because they're definitely playing at a really high level tonight. I feel like that makes them more determined. They're not looking for another loss. If they get another loss, they're going to feel very upset. Speaking of Nelsons, we have Jason Nelson, point guard. There's Tyrone Nelson enjoying the game. He's often seen here. You can catch him at a the Ryko game, a Highland Springs game, you see him at Verina as well. This is a great job. This, this is a 65-29 game. And what I honestly expect to be much closer. Yes, their first appearance this year was way closer than this, especially in the third quarter. They tied all the way into the fourth. This Highland Springs has some time to erupt, we'll see. They got three men on Crump, and they know, they know that they got to go to Crump. Runners now allowing that to happen. Got to be somebody else. You got to at least have somebody else as an option, right? Yeah. Inside, Crump back, works, no. Crump the rebound, and Crump's double teamed, and Crump's going to get rid of it. And that time, well done. Patiently worked inside Devin Cole's scores. Very fine out of the trap. It was a very good fake with that layup. He didn't let the, he didn't let the defender block him. He did his best to fake it and make him think, make him act too soon, and that is what works out for them now. Still the defending state champs with a 34-point lead. And you heard Coach Lacey at halftime, the interview with uh, our, our uh, courtside reporter. He said, his goal was to keep doing what they're doing and rest some guys to get them ready for the playoffs. So he's looking, he, he's looking towards the future here. Finally, here's something we can show you if you're a Springer fan from hashtag Springer Nation. Attacking the defense, that really was getting that extra pass and then finding Coles. I believe that's the first bucket of the night for Coles. Sixty-five, thirty-one, Verina. As the Blue Devils brought out Lavar Mallory, now, number thirty. That three off the iron, no good. Rebound, Jordan Crump. I believe it's unofficial. I believe Crump has a double double. He's Pretty putting, close. He's putting in work on the glass. He's been doing it all for the Spurs. There's the inbounds. I think they're going to call that a kick ball. Went off Verina's foot, so they'll do it again. Well, guys, with 19, well, they're going to make it 21 seconds on the clock before the end of the third. What uh, have you guys seen from trying to cover a game live? What's your experience been like? Been great so far. I mean, try to be like the people you see on TV. Try to be like Kevin Harlan, Chris Weber, but you gotta be yourself. <laughs> gotta be unique. You do. And, and 
you find it eventually. The three at the buzzer from the corner is no good. That's about the only thing that hasn't gone Jordan Hernandez's way. As at the end of three, it's a complete blowout for number one defending champ, Verina, 65 to 31. Well, Malachi, what do you think? Is this something you want to do again? Is this something I want to do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, is this, I mean, would you like to call another basketball? Or football? Play yes, by play, you know? Play by play. Abigail, this is a different experience for you because you get to see the game from a different vantage point since you play with JV. What do you think about, uh, uh, doing something like this again. You see yourself in, 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 a, in a booth doing a game live? I think I could see myself doing this. This is something my dad always talks about. He's like, you talk about sports so much. This is something the communication center will help you with. And he's not lying. I never would have been able to do this. But like last year as an eighth grader, I never would have been able to sit up here and talk about sports. But I feel like this is something I, I mean, I know I enjoy doing this. So. I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys as we start the fourth quarter. I, I tell you what I think is amazing is that um, we have a lot of different centers across Henrico County that offer different things. Um, and the communication center obviously offers a chance to do something like this. You know what? It also gives us a chance to go courtside to our reporter, Mr. Davis. He's got more down near the Verina bench. Take it away. At the end of the third quarter, the Blue Devils lead with a 65 to 31 advantage. The Springers had multiple open looks as they increased their intensity, but it just wasn't enough to overcome that Blue Devils outstanding defense. They had a total of seven blocks that quarter. Yep, thank you very much. Davis Taylor. Court side, seven blocks a quarter. That's when your whole team's doing it right. Crump with another rebound for Highland Springs. He's filling the stat sheet tonight, too. So the question is, is this a hot Verina team that ran into a Highland Springs team that just was not, not ready to match the intensity of Verina, or is this a Highland Springs team that needs to work on some stuff as they get into the playoffs? I feel like the best thing that, I mean, the only thing that you see with Highland Springs that they're struggling with is just stopping the ball. They're trying to get to the basket. They're doing their best, but they can't finish with their shots, and they're really struggling with stopping Verona from getting anywhere. Pat, like, they just can't stop them. Plus, uh, getting the uh, rebound would help, too, as Jenkins collects another. Here comes Crump. He's blocked from behind by Jenkins. Uh-oh. He missed it again. <laughs> That's the second missed dunk of the night. Did you see that dunk by Tyrese Jenkins? I got to tell you something, though. I, th okay, so this happened last week when Verona played Henrico. <laughs> they not only... They not only, yeah, they not only missed the dunk, but we're going to show it to you. They get a technical foul, and, and you're going to see why. Actually, that's the putback by Jenkins, and that shows uh, that's just one of the many reasons why Verina has the lead over Highland Springs. But one of the reasons why uh, Highland Springs is shooting free throws for a technical is because instead of converting on the dunk, not only did he miss it, but he also hung on to the rim, which is a no-no in a T. So an automatic turnover in possession, the other team gets two, two shots. It's athletic and cool looking, but much cooler if you convert the dunk. So they got to work on their their windmill 360 dunks or something when they have practice. Got to work on the Jordan Cradle. Yeah. Verona just needs a dunk contest, Coach Lacey. They'll get it together. Get you that smooth all-star game. There you go. What a nice shot. That was uh, uh, you see you see that style of jumper in the NBA time and time again. That's how smooth that was. 69-33. Yeah. It's frustration time. 
foul on the play. They're subbing all their starters out and I guess giving them some rest because the score is so, there's so, such a big deficit. They got to give their starters some kind of rest. They have a big week next week. Yeah, Coach Lacey doing what he told reporters. Number 42, Lorenz Terry in. Number 24, Jalen Travis is in. You have number 20 in there, Lenard Scott. Number Jalen 20, Travis. Number 21, Alfonso Villa. The ball goes off Verina. They save it. And now Highland Springs, Tremaine Talbert. Oh, and he misses the dunk. Another chance, this time the layup will work. I know it's not flashy and highlight driven. See, they know they're on TV, that's why they're missing dunks. They want, they want to make that one big play, right? Trying to get on ESPN. Trying to make, or at least sports. Ball. That ball is stolen. The Blue Devils. This is a great chance though, right? I mean, you've been in this situation before where you come off the bench and you don't get to play hardly at all, and and then you get some minutes, or you've seen teammates do. Yeah, it's something you just gotta work your best because I mean, you come off the bench, you gotta be prepared. You have to know what you're doing. If you don't watch the game, you're just sitting over there goofing off or, you know, something. You have to be rested, you have to be ready. If you come out there and you're not playing to your best potential, then the coach is gonna pull you right out. There's no reason that sitting on, that you not starting, not being, have played before, you should be tired. Well, and what players need to realize that Number one, your first point, your, your opportunities are going to be few and far between. Number two, coaches are looking for that seventh, eighth, maybe even ninth guy that can come in and give him some minutes and get some audition to see if you can be that guy. Ooh, he's a shooter. Who's a shooter? So far, everybody for Verizon is going to shoot. Shooters are going to shoot. Shooter is going to shoot. Highland Springs done not enough ball movement, and they have not been connecting on long range shots. There's a shot. As he takes deep. one. Right. Off the front of the rim, it's a scramble to get the ball down the court. And it doesn't matter if they have their whole second team in, they're still getting offensive rebounds. They're still going to get off of these rebounds. It's something they practice every day of practice. It's something that they always go through, something that they've always been good at, is getting those rebounds and, you know, trying to take good shots. They just have great hustle. Hustling to the ball, knowing it's oh. going to be nice. Going for the monster block. Instead, we got a monster foul. Devil's going to the line. Cameron Friend on the foul. He's seen some time. Leonard Scott has a chance to get in the score, but he does. Seventy to thirty-five. They officially have double the points for the Springers. I was saying earlier, what's, what's great is the opportunities you have, the studio. And here's the foul again. See, he came down hard. I mean, it, it, it looks worse than it is because if he's not going for the ball, that would definitely have been a technical force of that foul, but obviously he's going for the block, so that's why it was just a two shot foul. Leonard Scott brings it up, but with your center, I've seen your studio, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And with, with what you guys are able to, to do, and even to put some things together, as, as three ball is hit from the top of the key. I mean, you have a chance to have you know, that cool window into another like, uh, dimension. Uh, they're gonna call another timeout here. You guys have a chance to put together a nice little reel before you even start college, you know. So 
your opportunities almost seem as endless as the defending champs here tonight. Yeah. I have a lot of opportunities to get involved, get our feet wet, and opportunities like this to be on TV, be on television. It's a great opportunity. I think it's a great opportunity too and for you guys, but it, I'll be selfish. I think it's a great, great opportunity for me because I get to work with some new people, you know. Uh, here's the three from the top of the key. Alfonso Phillips. There you go, Alfonso. You're into the stat sheet now, too. Freshman, get his time, by his time, get on the court, splash him. That's making the most, Abigail, your minutes when you hit a three from the top of the court. That is just getting out there, scoring like you're supposed to do. There's nothing better than that. 2.59 to go in the game. Verena about to get win number 20 on the season. Fouls called down low. They will move to 20 and one. First round of the playoffs to start, I believe, next Friday night. How is the Verina JV Abigail looking this year? Um, girls or, or guys? The girls. I'm talking about your team. Well, the girls are done, but we finished with a way better record than last year, and we're really building up our program. It's a lot of, you know, competition. I We played. We, d we did not play Holland Springs as JV because they did not have a JV team, but we did play a lot of different schools that are good competition, like Henrico and we won the majority of our games this year which is something that we have we've always we tried to do last year and we struggled with and they're just a lot better this year than they have been in the past how interesting is it going to be for you though because you may be in transition going from jv to potentially varsity as early as next year heading into your junior season it's pretty interesting. I'm really excited for it. I love the coaches. All the coaches work very well together, and they really inspire you to do your best in everything you do. So it's a really good thing and really exciting. Splash, splash for Cameron Friend. And the three ball has not been a friend for Highland Springs so far in this one. They finally get one to go. Fouls on the floor. I like the determination by Jalen uh, Travis. It was well done. As we wind down, under two to play. Well, let me ask you guys, because yeah, we're being objective here tonight. I, but I know you're you're Verena students first and foremost. So, who is your favorite player to watch on the, on the guys' team here? Um, favorite player, probably gonna be Jordan Hernandez. He, he has vertical out of the roof, block shots. Inside, outside, make threes. Just an amazing all-around player. He's got athleticism, no doubt. Definitely. Minute 15 to go. Malachi, do you uh, you agree? Did you go Jordan or did you go somewhere else? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Would you go Jordan Hernandez, or would you go someone else for favorite player? I still can't hear you. Sorry. All right, we got we got a little connection this year. I don't know what's going on. The ball is stolen. They're on the rebound, and that's a flush. That's a slam right there. Cameron Friend, 73, 41. So we got to wait until the last minute and a half before uh, we can wrap this up, put a bow on it. So the bench of the Springers getting their shot as well. That shot is off the mark. And Verena can dribble this out, but no, they take the three. Highland Springs will have a last shot at it and a foul with 12.9 to go. That's something Verena does not need. I mean, they are up, but they don't. Coach Lisi does not like to foul at all. And for people to go in and foul, he gets very upset. That's just something he doesn't like to see is his team fouling, even if it's at the end. And the seas are emptying behind us. That's inside us. As the crowd knows it's almost time to go. That's up and in. 
A quick two and one. Allen Springs not going into this great night quietly. David Jackson for two. And this is the free throw. The ball is tipped out of bounds, and we're just going to let the clock go. That is going to do it. Verina 73, Highland Springs 43, and James from start to finish. Verina had this one go. Yeah, in control from the finishing to the end. So, just an all-around good performance for Verina to end their season. And it's really the end of one season, the start of another is next week regional playoffs begin. Verina will have that touted top seed and have a chance to kind of control their own destiny with some home games. And before we say goodbye, we're going to have one more shot down courtside with our reporter, Mr. Kenny Lawson as soon as he grabs a head coach for Verina Mr. Andrew Lacey Let's see if he can grab Andrew Lacey as he's hugging the players these players know each other really well they battle against each other season in and season out whether they're whether, whether it's in the winter or summer they're playing ball against each other so they know each other really well a lot of great chemistry absolutely these players. tremendous we tremendous talk about chemistry. we talk about all the contact that's on the court but you also see each both teams picking the other team up they never let each other sit on the ground they always offer a helping hand if one's on the floor someone's helping them up even if it's a Verona player helping a Holly Springs player they know each other so well and they bond and they have such good sportsmanship well guys it's been a tremendous ball game for Verina no doubt 73 43 finish and we'll go down courtside now because Kenneth is finally with a victorious from the uh, they have real strong real execution strong execution what are your thoughts on tonight's game I think our kids played well um, to end the season um, what are their goals were to win 20 games so to come in tonight and put the effort that they did tonight to go 20 and one in the season, and then um, secure this tonight. They hadn't lost in the Capital District in three years, so it's like 37 straight for them. So I think that they deserve all the credit. That's right. Great blowout game tonight. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kenny Lawson, courtside. And guys, let's put a wrap on this. 73, 43 is your final from Glenn Rudisile Court here at Verina High School. For Abigail, for Malachi, for James, and for me, and for where are we going? Oh, there, and for everybody on camera. Turn around and wave. <laughs> and for the production crew, and for the sideline cams. Here at Verona, you guys did one heck of a job. Literally, seriously, there she is. You know what? I, we met with the students about what? Early in the JV game, told them what to do, gave them the what is what and the opportunity. So we thank everybody, not just us here at the talent at the at the table, but the camera, the crew, and the game coverage. Again, brought to you by the crew at the Center for Communication and Media Relations. Final score once again from Glenn Rudisile Court. It's Verina 73, Highland Springs 43. Have a great night, everyone.